Hey everyone, this is Tracy Chen. I'm an immigration lawyer based in Australia. And today I wanna to talk about the invitation rounds in Tasmania for this past financial year. As it is already April, the new financial year is just around the corner, which is super exciting because that means new requirements and new things to look forward to. But today, let's talk about what's happened in Tasmania over the past financial year. Now, for those of you who want to get in contact with myself or one of our fantastic lawyers or agents, our contact details are below. So first of all, before you lodge any skilled visa here in Australia, you must be under the age of 45, be able to score at least 65 points and have a valid skills assessment and that goes for anything 190 or 491 but for the 491 and 190 there is separate requirements when it comes to the state so I'll briefly run through what the requirements were for Tasmania because they're actually super complicated and there's a lot of requirements so it will be very brief but if you wanted to look at what the requirements are I've done previous videos before and I'll link them below so if you wanted to apply for the 190 visa in Tasmania there's four streams the Tasmanian skilled employment pathway the Tasmanian skilled graduate pathway, the Tasmanian established resident pathway, and the last one, which is the only one that is for overseas applicants. And it's called the overseas applicant health sector job offer pathway, which is pretty self-explanatory. So what you would need to identify first is out of those four, which one do you actually qualify for? So what you'll see is that there are basic requirements and you'll need to make sure that you meet all of those basic requirements before you can even proceed to the next step. So first of all, you check the minimum requirements. So for example, if we're looking under the Tasmanian skilled employment pathway, there is a few things that you'll need to meet the requirement for. So you may need to have an occupation listed on the TOSOL list, or if you're looking at another option, there's some long-term employment options. And then for both options, there's employment requirements too. So for example, you must be working at least 20 hours per week over the six month period before lodging your application. And you must be living in Tasmania and your dependents must be living in Tasmania with you. So there's a bunch of requirements there, but just because you meet those requirements doesn't mean you'll get an invite. So look at those first. And then the next thing you need to look at is the attributes. So you scroll down on the website and then you look at attributes. And when you open the list, you'll see that there is gold, green, and orange. Now remember for all the different streams, the attributes are again different. So right now I'm just looking at the attributes under the skilled employment pathway for the 190 Tasmanian visa. And basically what I found over this past financial year is that if you have gold or green, doesn't matter what stream or what pathway you are. If you have at least just one green or one gold, you'll get invited and pretty much straight away. Like a lot of our clients who had a gold or green, I think we got invited within maybe one or two weeks, sometimes even faster. But as you can probably see that it's not easy to get green and gold. So you'll need to work really hard to kind of meet those requirements. We do have some applicants who have orange attributes only, and they may have a few. And it's not like the more attributes you have, the more likely you're going to get invited. You just need one. But the problem is you just need one green or gold. If you have orange, that's okay. Hopefully you'll get invited later if they have nomination places left, but they're definitely prioritizing the green and gold. And then when you look at that, you also need to look at other additional information. So if you're on the attribute page, you scroll down and you look at other things. There's additional information, exclusions and definitions for employment, business operators, study, dependents. So for example, for your employer, they may need to be operating operating in Tasmania for the past 12 months. And then also there's occupational caveats. So depending on what your occupation is, you'll need to check if there are any caveats against it. So I think Tasmania is super complicated. I think that they've made it difficult on purpose because what happened previously was there was a lot of people who were relocating to Tasmania because people were saying it's easy to get a PR there. And maybe once upon a time, I actually don't even remember when it was easy, maybe years and years ago now, but for the past, three or four years, I think it's been pretty tough to get an invitation in Tasmania. And that's because they are purposely making it difficult. They want people who are genuinely working in Tasmania and people who genuinely want to stay in Tasmania. And so if you are looking to relocate to a state, don't use the state. A lot of people are doing that. So they're relocating South Australia, relocating Tasmania, get their invitation and then they leave. So, you know, you're kind of using the state and that's what's made it so hard for people now. So if you look at the smaller states like Tasmania, South Australia, the Australian Capital Territory, 
Territory, the Northern Territory. If you look at their requirements compared to the other states, you'll be like, why is this so much harder? Because they have just made it harder. They're only interested in people who genuinely have a job, want to work there and want to stay there. So if you are thinking about relocating to a state just to get the invite and then to leave, probably not the best idea. It makes it hard for people who actually genuinely want to stay in the state because there is like a million requirements. And I think out of all the states, Tasmania is definitely the hardest. There's just so many things to look at. Like when we review a file, we have to go through so many things because there's just so many requirements. Whereas when we look at New South Wales and Victoria, the requirements are a lot less. But the requirement with that is if you do meet the requirements in Tasmania, like you're applying for the 190 under the skilled employment stream and you have a green attribute, that's excellent. That means you will most likely get invited and very quickly. So that is the positive of it. So you've got to work very hard to meet those requirements. But if you do, you're going to get invited. Whereas in Victoria and New South Wales, yeah, the requirements aren't as complex. And you look at it and be like, yeah, cool. I meet those requirements. I should get an invite. But obviously the competition is a lot higher because because a lot more people also meet the requirements. So it's things to balance and think about. If you can meet the requirements in Tasmania, absolutely go for it because the likelihood of you getting invited is much higher than competing against other applicants in Victoria and New South Wales if you're applying in Victoria and New South Wales. Anyways, I hope that video was helpful. I'm going to talk about the Australian Capital Territory next. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to hear about anything else, just drop it in the comments below and I will do my best to present the video. Thank you.